do me a favor. Picture your favorite crypto app or exchange. Got it? Now I have five questions for you. Question number one, does your favorite app or exchange have fiat on and off ramps that do not charge you crazy fees? Question number two, does your app actually help you time your investments with machine learning and algorithms? Question number three, does your app or favorite exchange connect to multiple exchanges to get you best rates, best liquidity, but also mitigate the risk of a central failure of one single order book? Question number four, is your favorite app or exchange Swiss made, but also licensed and regulated in the EU so that you can feel 100% reassured, but also sleep well at night? Question number five, is your favorite app or exchange fully aligned with your principles and values, 100% community centric and not VC backed? So if your answer to any of these questions is a no, what are you waiting for? Download the Swissborg Wealth app, join the new era of wealth management and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonite, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have a special edition again, Battle of the Blockchains DeFi Duel, so that you guys can get some deep analysis, a review, and also a tutorial all in one so that you understand not only which is probably the best platform, but also how to use it strategically. And I'm accompanied here with a really good friend and one of the smartest people I know, Anthony Le Soignier, co-founder of Swissborg. How are you doing today, Anthony? I'm doing very good. Thank you, Alex. Uh, and, and yeah, welcome to the community, to this new episode. I'm very excited to be here with you again and to share some very interesting knowledge with our community. And, and yeah, welcome, guys. There's going to be some really good comments and really good information here today, guys. you got to understand that very few people go as deep as Anthony when it comes to analyzing different platforms. And today's topic of the day is DeFi on Ethereum, yield farming on Ethereum versus yield farming on the Binance Smart Chain. Is that right, Anthony? That's correct. And we've been seeing, you know, the two ecosystems developing a lot. Of course, as always, Ethereum is ahead of the curve, but we see some very interesting things happening with the Binance Smart Chain. And we are very excited that today uh, we can share what we're observing with the community. And before we kick off, Anthony, I see a really nice screen behind you. DeFi and yield farming made easy. What is this? Could you tell us a little bit more before we kick off on the analysis? Absolutely. So as you know, guys, as you probably know, that's something that, uh, again, is part of the mission of Swissborg is to offer you the best wealth management tools in the crypto space. And obviously, DeFi and yielding has been something that we've been working on since a long time and we are very excited because in November we are going to release a DeFi made easy version uh, directly on the Wealth app that you guys can access in single click, invest your money in USDC and start to earn a yield with us. If you want to know more, if you want to discover more what does it mean, you just have to go on swissborg.com slash smart yield account. We have a special landing page that will explain you everything about this new feature that we are very eager to release. Fantastic. So you guys heard it. Today, you will hear one of Anthony's strategies on how to use yield farming, how to make the most out of it. But if you want things to be automated for you, optimized and simplified, please check out the Swissborg Wealth app. So without further ado, Please give us a high level picture, Anthony, on Ethereum versus Binance. And by the way, guys, if you have your own personal preferences, if you are yield farming as of today, please let us know in the comments box below and tell us which platform you like more and more importantly, why. So go ahead, Anthony, on a high level, general global picture. Yeah, so today we, we, we're going to start with analyzing the different metrics and statistics that we can see on, to, uh, on both blockchains. Then we're gonna dig deeper into the Binance Smart Chain, trying to understand what was the choice that the, the, the Binance team made when it was about building this uh, smart chain. And, and finally, we are going to explore and, 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 and give you a small tutorial on how to yield farming on Binance Smart Chain. So coming back on the stats, uh, when we look at uh, the Ethereum blockchain and the Binance Smart Chain, 
Of course, we see a huge difference between the two. Uh, on one hand, we have the Ethereum uh, uh, smart uh, blockchain, sorry, that has um, over 140 million of unique address. Uh, but of course, Ethereum exists since five years now. And we have the Binance Smart Chain that has been launched in uh, August this year. So five years later, almost. And, but that accumulates so far almost 300k uh, unique address, which is very good. When we specifically look at the number of yield farming projects, we have something around 3, 000, uh, 300 sorry, uh, unique yield farm projects on Ethereum. But we already have almost three 30 projects uh, on the Binance Smart Chain, which is 10% of what is available on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. So, so far, Anthony, if, if I can cut you really shortly, so we know that the Ethereum blockchain already has $12 billion AUM, but you're saying that despite the fact that Ethereum has long history, we have 300 projects built on Ethereum, but already 30 projects built on the Binance Smart Chain. Is that correct? That's very correct. Of course, the traffic is not the same. Uh, IUM are not the same. We, we haven't seen a big player such as Uniswap uh, uh, so far on the Binance Smart Chain, and, but it's easily, easily explainable because, again, you, you have less than 300k unique address. Uh, so the community is not as big as the Ethereum community, but we've seen very, very promising projects that we are going to discuss today. That sounds really good, Anthony. So can you let us know? A lot of people say the first mover's advantage will take the entire market. Is that always the case? I know that you have a really good case study when it comes to the general companies in the past comparing Amazon with other companies. Yeah, absolutely. So why I'm so fascinating in a sense or why I'm so optimistic on uh, the potential of the Binance Smart Chain is because we've seen that in the past, right? Uh, when you look, for example, at Amazon.com and Alibaba, and when you see the two stories, you can see that Alibaba has been a very successful model, but they've been using a lot all the development and research that has been made by Amazon in the past. So Amazon started their business 25 years ago, and even though it seems very natural today that you can purchase any uh, things on the internet, back then, you know, back in, in, in that time, that it was quite, you know, quite something new that you can buy something on the internet. Internet was at its early days, as it is with the blockchain right now. And, it was, and Amazon had to invest a lot of money and a lot of research in educating people, creating community of people that do trust internet enough that they can buy it their stuff. So that's a lot of investment, right? That you need to make. There is, there is a lot of a bunch of experiences that you need to run and you need to create the community. And, and that's the very hard job of the pioneer of one industry. And <clears throat> Alibaba, five years after, reused, the, 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 in a sense, all the investment that Amazon.com has done by creating the, the, both the education and the community and developed their own business. And that gave them a very huge advantage because they didn't have to uh, run as much experiences as, as Amazon had to do in the past, right? And, and we see uh, that happening not only with the e-commerce uh, business section of Amazon, but it, was, it, it is true for the cl cloud services, the online video, the hardware services. Financial services is, is another story. Alipay was developed before Amazon Pay, but still, I mean, the main, the core business of, 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 of these two giants uh, that is the e-commerce and cloud services, we've seen this pattern where Amazon is exploring and educating uh, people and Alibaba then uh, capitalize and, uh, on, on, on this education and on this development uh, and research. And what we do see today is Ethereum was the pioneer in a sense, so it is the Amazon of the blockchain in, in that example. And then Binance Smart Chain is reusing all the knowledge and reusing all the community that an education part that has been done by Ethereum and is developed and is coming with his own solution that is we will see very pragmatic and that solve one of the biggest let's say challenges for Ethereum. That makes a lot of sense. So first off, first of all on rela related to the first slide it seems like Ethereum wins in terms of projects being built on top, wins in terms of AUM, 
but being the first mover is a double-edged sword, huh, Anthony? It's cool because you can create that community and stuff like that, but people can come later and solve problems that they haven't solved yet. Exactly. Um, when we look specifically at the model of the Binance Smart Chain, I think they come with a very, very pragmatic solution. And we can see this very pragmatic solution in three folds. <clears throat> so first of all, what they've done is they simply forked the Ethereum blockchain. So they use the Go Ethereum client that was developed by uh, Parity. It's a famous uh, uh, you know, company, uh, very active with Gavin Hood on the Ethereum uh, community. And what they have done is they have reused uh, they have created a blockchain that is fully compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. So it seems complicated, but what does it mean is everything that every single thing that is developed on Ethereum blockchain can be reused on the Binance Smart Chain, which means that if there is a successful smart contract that already operates on Ethereum, then you can, uh, you can simply transfer the smart contract to reuse all the the research and development and the testing as well, right? Because we know that uh, uh, um, security on blockchain is a huge, huge uh, challenge. It is something that is extremely critical. So by doing so, the Binance Smart Chain allow the community of developer of the Ethereum blockchain to easily transfer their smart contract into the Binance Smart Chain, which means that they don't have to create a new community of developers that will learn, that learn a new language and with all the challenge that, that it means, right? You just, if you know how to code on, uh, on, the, uh, on Solidity, that is the Ethereum language, it's very easy then you can do uh, the same on the Binance Smart Chain. And I think that's very smart because we've seen more and more uh, uh, blockchain that has been launched recently, uh, such as Avalanche, Polkadot, and, and there is many examples in the space, but one of the biggest challenge of all this new blockchain is maybe there are the, 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 the engine of the blockchain itself is better than what Ethereum is offering, but still they don't have the same community and it will take a lot of time for them to create the same community of developer, for, for instance. That makes a lot of sense. So people can easily migrate the interoperability actually is, is very, very practical. And it sounds like in terms of originality and of creating the, the ecosystem, Ethereum wins the point here. And what, what are, I see fast and cheap as the third point. Are those the two main problems that Binance Smart Chain solves as of today? I think when, when we look at the Ethereum and, and, and again, that's the, that's the big, you know, that's a big topic about Ethereum 2. To spot zero is how can we make the Ethereum blockchain one spot zero faster and cheaper, right? And and that's why they want to the the the, the goal of the Ethereum two spot zero is to offer proof of stake, right? So to move from the proof of work that we have today to the proof of stake, and and it's and when you have an open proof of stake uh, network. It's, it's extremely challenging. And that's why uh, many experts believe that Ethereum 2 will not happen before two years at least. And Binance Smart Chain came with a very pragmatic solution. They say, Ethereum is good. We can reuse their community. They have a strong community. They have the strongest community, actually. There is a plenty of projects that already have a, 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 an Ethereum token, so we can reuse that. There is many tools that has been developed, such as MetaMask, that is most probably the, mo the most famous web browser when it's come to Ethereum uh, uh, network and blockchain. And, and we can reuse all these things, but we need to solve the core problem of Ethereum. That is, um, transaction can be extremely expensive, especially when the network is buzzy, and they can be very slow as well. So what, what we can do is, we can solve this problem and, and, and use a different engine system, but we're not going to fight for proof of stake because proof of stake, uh, open proof of stake is very difficult to do. So they came with a proof of stake authority that is something in between. It's of course much more centralized than a proof of stake uh, um, blockchain, but it's very pragmatic because then you can deploy and you can have a very pragmatic solution that does work on day one. Um, so currently, when you look at the Binance Smart Chain, you have 21 validators and, and you have clear rules to participate. You need at least to have 
20,000 uh, Binance coin uh, on your wallet and you need to, to, to match the requirement in terms of hardware as well, but it's very easy to, to match them. And you can become a validator and start to accumulate transaction fees on, on the Binance Smart Chain. So that, that, that's, that's very smart. And when we look deeper at the consensus mechanism and engine that Binance Chain uh, has put in place, again, it's very smart because they've been using all the components of Ethereum that are extremely valuable to their community. And they've been using the, the, the Cosmos uh, uh, research and engine of validation to make the usage of the blockchain easier. So they are solving on one hand the problematic of every developer. So they keep uh, um, the promise of, of Ethereum for uh, the community of developer, but they make the usage of the blockchain much more faster and easier for the user. So it's really merging the, the best of, the, uh, of both worlds. Okay, great. So you guys had it just to summarize and clarify. Ethereum is more decentralized than the Binance Smart Chain, but the Binance Smart Chain took that compromise in order to be faster and also easier to use. Is that, is that correct? Faster and simpler. That's absolutely correct. And, and of course, you have a bunch of documentation. If you guys want to know more, you just have to go on, uh, on websites and you find all the requirements. But in a nutshell, it's faster, it's cheaper, and everything that does exist and does work on Ethereum, because I repeat myself, when you have a smart contract that has been running since two years, such as the Compound smart contract or the Uniswap smart contract, have collected millions and billions of, of assets and never been hacked or never failed to deliver the logic, then you have a huge guarantee that this smart contract is solid. And if you have a blockchain where you can export and, and uh, this, this smart contract very easily, that makes all the difference of developing something new in a blockchain that is unknown and doesn't have a huge community of developers. So not everyone can look at it. When you, when you go on Twitter or when you go on, 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 on Reddit or any other channel, you see a competition between Ethereum developer and everyone wants to compete to, to find the, the failure of one smart contract. And it makes the, the entire ecosystem extremely resilient. And that's why I, I, I really like the Binance Smart Chain. Okay, Anthony, so thank you so much for comparing the Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. And the theoretical side is great, but how do we test it? How can we prove the users out there that the Binance Smart Chain is faster and cheaper? So let's use a project that is both on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. The same project, as we've seen, it's easy to move from one project to another when you develop a project. And let's see what is the cost and what is the time that it takes to do exactly the same transaction on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. Okay, so we are going to, to use the Cream project. Cream project is something similar to Compound. It's to lend your crypto asset and receive the yield to lend uh, your money. So as you can see, I'm connected to the Ethereum blockchain with my MetaMask wallet, and I have a hundred bucks of USDT that I can lend. So if I decide to uh, land a hundred bucks of my USDT on, on uh, the Cream project, I'm going to receive this yield that is not much for lending my hundred bucks. Now I need to validate the transaction uh, on Ethereum blockchain. As, as we can see, right, is if I decide now to, to, lo to land my hundred bucks of, of USDT on the Crypt platform, this is how much transaction fee I'm going to pay. Almost $6 of transaction. 6% just for $100. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. And it will take approximately less than a minute to be validated on uh, the Ethereum blockchain. So realistically, you know, obviously Ethereum right now, the unfortunately yield farming is very exclusive to the wealthy. How much do you really need to put, Anthony, in terms of ticket size in order to enjoy yield farming on Ethereum with these crazy gas fees? Yeah, I think, uh, of course, it's less busy than it was uh, two months ago, but I would say still we are in a range of 5K, 10K to make it very relevant to invest because, again, APY and, and things are moving so fast that you should not expect that your money will st stay for more than a few days or even sometimes a few hours on the platform. So to make the, the, the economics valuable, 
you need to invest significant amount of money. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the Binance Smart Chain. Again, I'm using the MetaMask uh, wallet and I can use, as you can see, on both chain, uh, which is very good because Binance Smart Chain is on it's top of the Ethereum blockchain. Mm. And I'm going to perform the same operation. Uh, we've seen like the, the, the yield are more significant here, but again, it's not because it's on Binance Smart Chain, it's because of the dynamic, the supply and demand. Uh, that is separate on blockchain, on the Ethereum blockchain and the Binance Smart Chain. So this this hill will move on, on a real-time basis. So there is no guarantee that because it's on the Binance Smart Chain, I will earn more. Uh, the point here is is to look at the transaction uh, cost and, and speed. So as you can as you can see here, uh, this is how much BNB I'm going to pay for the transaction. It's much less. Uh, that what we will have paid with Ethereum. I'm going to validate the transaction that uh, we can have a sense of the speed and the cost of landing 100 bucks, 100 USDT with the Binance Smart Chain. Yeah, and, and so <clears throat> you see it's, it's extremely, extremely fast. And we are going to look at the detail of the transaction on BSC scan is equivalent of uh, if scan. So as you can see, transaction fees was extremely low, right? It's 11 cents. So 11 cents is 50 times cheaper than, than the, the $6. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot, right? Is I can perform 50 transactions on Binance Smart Chain where I can only operate one with the same amount uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. And it only took 18 seconds to be validated. So cheap and fast and why it, it, the, it is so critical and good because again DeFi are moving so fast and there is so much uh, contract that you want to play with and experiment that with Ethereum blockchain and paying so much fees it makes the entire uh, um, experiment with the Ethereum blockchain much more harder and, and it creates a barrier to entry that is much higher than the Binance Smart Chain. That's fantastic. That's really, really interesting. And it shows, I think, the Porsche and the De Chevaux, as we see on the left, <laughs> in terms of the speed. I do have a question, Anthony. You know, like, obviously, Ethereum, the, the gas fees are very high, but also the network is massive, right? What if Binance had as many projects on the Binance Smart Chain? Would it still be able to scale and still be able to offer such low transaction fees and speed? That's a very good question. But again, the 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 validation engine, so the the, um, the mechanism, the consensus mechanism that the two blockchains are using are not the same. Uh, the engine of consensus at that the Binance Smart Chain is using is the one of Cosmos. So there is nothing to do with the one of Ethereum blockchain. It, it has been designed uh, to scale a lot. So. I wouldn't see any problem. Maybe the, the transaction cost will be a little bit higher. There will be more competition, of course, but it should scale much more than the Ethereum blockchain. Because of this approach that is slightly more centralized, but it, as of on the flip of the coin, it actually provides the speed and low costs. Exactly. Fantastic. So can we dive deeper into the Binance Smart Chain and tell us a little bit about the projects on it? Yeah. So. We're going to explore everything. I'm going to give you guys a tutorial how to use DeFi uh, project on Binance Smart Chain. But before we, we, we do that, I want to clarify what is farming. Because we use this unique word to describe a huge range, a large range of different projects and different strategies. And I want to make sure you, you guys that we speak the same language. So when we look at the, the, the different type of yield farming, this is the free family that I can see. The first one, and that's the original one with Compound, uh, are the landing platform. And it's very simple. To earn on the landing platform, you have to land or you have to borrow. It really depends on the incentivization mechanism. But most of the time, you land and you earn something. The second family is all about providing liquidity. And here again, we have a historical player that is Uniswap. And here you provide decentralized liquidity. And in exchange for providing this decentralized liquidity, you receive a fees. 
And sometimes you're incentivized as well. And the last family that is the most recent family are vaults. Vaults are system where you either stake your token, it could be a large range of token, or you invest. And then what they do on the background, they do perform some operation on different other platform to optimize the investment and optimize your yield farming. And that's really where the, 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 the terminology yield farming come from. It's from this vault. So there is these three families and there is always opportunity in, in these, these three families and you can always find uh, an angle where you can earn something by using them. And of course, because every project try to compete with the other project, but does collaborate as well with the other project, you have different incentivization mechanism. And what does it mean when you invest in, 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 um, in yielding is you need to keep yourself very active because things move a lot. So I see some of them are actually in between. So I see Curve, the logo, decentralized exchange, which some people also call automated market making, AMMs. Um, and I also see it in a DeFi vault. Does that mean that some of these DeFi platforms are kind of a hybrid between the two? That's correct. So we've seen projects that that have been using. So there is no specific rules. Of course, that's one classification that we are offering to you guys that you can better understand. But I would say every project has its own particularity and you have projects that really understand that everything works together. So they try to offer a, a, a large range of services within that platform with different incentive mechanism. Because at the end of the day, you need to have some uh, physical operation for fees to be made and then these fees to be distributed. This is how basically you yielding something. And the reason why in our traditional world uh, we, we get the chance to see no yield is beside the, the very accommodative monetary policies because we have so much intermediaries in the chain that every fees stay captured into these intermediaries and never get the chance to be distributed to the user or the community. And that's really what where um, the, 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 the DeFi space is changing the game is we are not using smart contracts. So we don't need these intermediaries any, any longer. And every fees that is generated across different systems can be redistributed. And that's the beauty of DeFi. And so could you give us examples for the specifically for the Binance Smart Chain in terms of a lending platform, a DeFi vault, and an automated market maker, a decentralized exchange? So again, the, the goal of today, guys, is to give you um, a quick tutorial on, 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 on every single family on the Binance Smart Chain. So we have selected three projects. Uh, that we believe are, are the one that somehow symbolize the best, uh, this free family on the Binance Smart Chain. So we're going to give you a small tutorial on how to invest in the Cream platform. We've seen that before, and we, we are going to do it again. Uh, on Pancake, that is the, let's say, the equivalent of Uniswap with other mechanisms that are very interesting on the Binance Smart Chain. And the last one that is the most complex one, the most new one, that is bfee.finance, uh, that is something that will be similar to um, the Wi-Fi, the very famous Wi-Fi uh, vault on the Ethereum blockchain. Fantastic. You guys have heard it. So these are very similar to the Ethereum. It's, yeah. Oh, please, risk the complex. Yeah. So, of course, before we invest, we want to make, you know, make very clear that risk attached to DeFi and despite the fact DeFi is really appealing at the moment, it's very complex to unpack. And there is a bunch of risk that will influence the success of your investment. The first, that is the most obvious one, is the te te technological risk. But again, on the Binance Smart Chain, because we have all the experience of the Ethereum blockchain, it does offer somehow some kind of, of, of insurance uh, to use uh, the Binance Smart Chain and the project of the Binance Smart Chain. But you have to, to, to keep you know, yourself informed. Make sure that the code has been audited at least and, and, and yeah, do your own research. That's very important. The second one is the market risk. So what we've seen in the past is the, the, the code itself is safe, but the logic is poorly implemented from a financial engineering perspective. And that's very complex because it's not really the code that is failing to protect the user interest, but is the rules 
the logic rules and the economical rules that are poorly designed. And we've seen that very recently with Harvest Finance. Uh, and it's not that the, co the code was not safe. It's just that the way the pricing methodology, the Oracle methodology has been done, that has give the opportunity to someone to use an arbitrage. And, and, and you have to understand as well that what is very complex with DeFi is when you build something, you, so DeFi are purely new financial product. So you build a new financial product and it's open source, right? And of course, they, because it's a financial product, we need the concept of Oracle. So we need some data that could be used by the smart contract to compute some financial operation. And maybe by the time you, you, you create your smart contract, everything works perfectly fine. And then you have another innovation. So you have someone that introduces a new smart contract that is going to operate with yours, but is doing something new, is offering something that has not been seen before. And maybe this innovation will introduce a weakness or an arbitrage or something that could be exploited on your smart contract. And that's the, that's the, the, the you know, that's the, the, the complexity of the ecosystem is Maybe flash loan doesn't exist. You create your smart contract, everything works fine. And then if someone invents flash loan and it then it completely change the dynamic of your code and the safety ness of your code, right? And that's the complexity of DeFi. So when we look at the market risk, there is a bunch of things that you need to follow to make sure you understand the market risk. And the last one is the governance risk because your, uh, uh, your return depend on the governance model as well of the and all the decisions that will be made inside the DeFi project. And that's something that we some most of the time we underestimate. And that's why we've seen all this yield as well going up and going down because governance does have a huge impact. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, guys. So you see in the headlines, you may see that Harvest had a smart code or code uh, bug, but actually it could be an economic loophole. There are many, many problems. And maybe one of these days, if you guys are interested in how to mitigate risk, how to create scoring systems, let us know in the comments box below and we can dive deeper into the risk side of uh, farming and, and the whole DeFi phenomenon. So uh, Anthony, drive us through an, an example. We'd love to see one of your strategies. You guys are very lucky to see a strategy for someone who's been farming for a while and has a pretty decent track record. So uh, go ahead, Anthony. Yeah. So again, that's very risky, guys. And you, you need to do your, your own research. It's changing every day. It's changing every minute, actually. Um, very quickly, so there is, of course, so much place where you can learn about new projects. I like to go on the BSC scan. That is the equivalent of if scan on the Binance Smart Chain. And uh, you have access to the new yield farming project. And, and from there, you, you can explore, right? And, and somehow it does provide you some kind of guidance when it, it becomes listed there, even though there is no guarantee, of course. Uh, so you simply have to, have to go on BC scan resource yield farming list. And from there, then you have some project that are listed and you can go. OK, the second project that we can review together uh, that is quite interesting is the Pancake project that is, again, the equivalent of, of Uniswap, Uniswap on the Binance Smart Chain. Mm. So the, the whole purpose of uh, uh, Pancake is that you can exchange, uh, you have a decentralized exchange such as Uniswap and you can exchange, for example, your BNB versus anything that you want, like BUSD, for example. And and then you have liquidity and, and, it, and it's, 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 it's quite good, right? When we, you have analytics and you'll see it's picking up. It's, um, it's really, really picking up at the moment. Okay, I'm gonna wait. So you see there is a cumulative uh, liquidity of uh, 150 and 9 million, which is good, right? It gives you confidence that the project is serious and that's something that is backed as well by the Binance DeFi VC fund. Um, so it, it give, give you confidence. And again, that, that should be part of your risk assessment. Is this project backed 
by the ecosystem itself, which is something that is good. And the way you form their token, so they have their own token that is the PAM cake token. And uh, you can see the price here. And how you make money by providing the, the, the uh, how do you earn their, their cake token is you, you, you have to provide liquidity on their platform. So of course, as always, if you provide liquidity on the BNB cake token, then you're going to receive a very decent yield. Uh, but of course, it's risky because the cake token is very volatile. Then if you move to something that is less volatile, is providing liquidity on BUSD and BNB, you're going to receive 22%. And I can show you guys how to provide liquidity. It's, 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 it is quite simple. So you go on exchange and you go and pull, and then you select the two tokens that you want to provide liquidity for. For example, this one that is uh, the equivalent of MakerDAO on, uh, uh, on the Binance Smart Chain project that I like a lot as well. <clears throat> and then I'm going to supply the, the, the... And again, you see it's very cheap to do this operation. So I'm going to create the pair, and maybe that's something that we can discuss and we can present in another uh, recording of Kryptonite if you guys are interested. And then when, when the, the pool is assembled, then I just go on farm and I'm gonna show to the ecosystem that I do possess, I, I do have uh, uh, provide liquidity on the pancake swap uh, exchange. And once the transaction is validated, so I'm gonna stake the token that I receive in exchange for providing liquidity, that is my share of the entire pool of liquidity between BNB and, 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 and this token. And here we go. So then it's become a stake into the pancake uh, um, farm ecosystem. And you'll see with time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to earn some cake. So just to, to confirm this, and for those watching out there, first you went on exchange and you decided to provide liquidity for the Venus coin XVS with your BNB. And then you go on to farm and you find the same token that you're providing liquidity for, and you farm that to earn pancake swap tokens. Exactly. And then you see that on real time, my cake balance is going to increase. So when you perform such action, then you need to assess, is the volatility of the pool will be low enough that the compensation that I will receive um, for providing liquidity will compensate the risk that I'm taking. Because of course, and we, we, we can look at, uh, at what does it means, but when you provide liquidity, you have two, the, the, your, the source of your revenue is linked to the fees. So when you, when you perform an exchange on, on, um, on the pancake swap exchange, and you try to exchange, for example, your BNB for BUSD, you see that there is a commission, right? And this commission that is here, that is the fees that are giving back to the liquidity provider is 20 bips, so 0.20%. And each time there is a transaction that is happening on the pancake swap, if I'm a liquidity provider, I'm going to receive a share of these fees. And fees are significant. When you, when you, when you look at them on the analytics, this is something that will make you earn by year something in the range of 5 to 10%, which is quite significant. But on top of that, that they can somehow, uh, so for example, if you go on BNB USD <clears throat> and you look at the BNB BUSD pool, you see that the fees for the la last 24 hours was <clears throat> $7,000 for a total liquidity of 30, 30 million. So when you, when you and, and it's compounded, uh, of course, because it is reinvested directly into the liquidity. So when, when, when you do the math, the, that would range between six to, yeah, between six to 10% APY uh, only with fees. But on top of that, <clears throat> because it's a new system and they want to incentivize you to provide liquidity, they are far, far available. So you, I can receive the seven to 10%, but on top of that, if I stake B, B, USD, BNB, I'm going to receive 20% in the cake token. And this is where all the math, you need to do your math and your risk assessment based on that. 
And that, that's where you gain like the big percentages, right? It's by farming that token. It's that, incent that incentive for you to use their platform and for using it, they're going to provide you with extra like a bonus token, right? Exactly. So in a sense, you know, one, one of the strategies that, uh, that I like is I'm going to provide, for example, liquidity on the token that I believe, BNB. And I'm going to, of course, monitor the, the, the performance of the BNB that, you know, I can, I can, I look at the graph and I, and I assess myself what, where is the next price level for resistance and support. And then if I provide liquidity, so I'm going to, as soon as I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure the contract is safe and, and all the due diligence has been made, I'm going to provide some uh, uh, BUSD, BNB liquidity on this contract. I'm going to receive cream every day, for example. And then I'm going to reuse this cream. And with this cream that I earn, I'm going to move to the more risky part. So I'm going to reuse the, the K that I earn every day. I'm going to sell them half and I'm going to buy in BNB. And now I'm going to provide liquidity on, on this pool that is a risky one, but it doesn't, it, it is not risky any, anymore because I'm just using the reward that I get from the pool that is the less risky one. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take risk on the reward that I've already accumulated. So you're just taking risk on money that you've created anyways, right? So you won't exactly. lose your initial investment. Exactly. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to assess uh, several factors. Is, is the price of the project low? What is the market capi uh, uh, capitalization? What is the uh, distribution rules? What is the supply rules? Uh, is there a good governance mechanism? There is good governance mechanism when we look at Pancake. There is a vote that you can make and it's very transparent. So you can, you can assess where the projects is, in which direction they are taking. They offer some innovative concept as well that the cake that you receive, you can stake them and then you receive an AVO token that you can stake again and receive a uh, token from other projects. So it becomes co quite complex. But it, it does show you how all this DeFi space combined together. And, and again, <clears throat> I don't necessarily need to possess a, a BNB to do that. I can go on Cream, deposit some BUSD if I don't want to specifically take the risk of BNB, borrow BNB, go there, uh, create on, 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 on Pubcake, create the pool, <laughs> stake the, I mean, use the pool, to receive the farming reward, use the reward, farm the reward with the cake BNB pool that is the more risky, go back to the staking, stake the reward, the finally the cake that I receive, and stake the new token that I receive for receiving new token. And, and then you, you <laughs> I think you, you, you lost already 99.9% .9 of the people, but I, I see your point. I think that it's really cool that you're mentioning that you could start, for example, with cream, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony. But you start by lending a token, then you borrow a token that you can get a good percentage. The token that you borrow, you bring it onto PancakeSwap, you, you put it in a liquidity pool, and the token that you're offering liquidity to, then you start farming another token. And with the profits you make from that token, 50% you sell it, for instance, to restake in BNB, and then 50% you can send it to a riskier pool. Is that, is that more or less kind of the flow? It is, it, is, it is true that there is more complexity because when you provide liquidity, then the, 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 uh, the geometry of what you provide is going to move. So you can be in a situation where you don't have uh, enough BNB left. You have left, less BNB left than what you have borrowed and it could be problematic. So if you want to combine Cream with something else, maybe you can use something like Fry World. And you can go on, on a more simple, I would say, uh, uh, less sophisticated mechanism and look very simply, um, how much will I make if I, for example, deposit B, w, uh, BNB with, 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 uh, uh, sorry, with, with, with this project. And unfortunately, the, 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 uh, the pool has handed, but before it was, so we see here it's 5%. So you can only receive 5%. So it doesn't make an economical sense to borrow at 15 to stake at five. But before it was 80%. So you can play with, with this kind of concept. So again, you when you look at DeFi, it's moving on the real time. So you, you need to keep aware of what's going on. 
and you need to find angle and opportunities. But so to keep it simple, like pancake swap is the easiest way if people want to start farming and just look at that two-step system that you that you had, right? Providing liquidity and then farming that token and then selling that token for a more riskier, making some gains and then maybe putting it into a riskier pool. Is, is that the easiest way for people to, to start if it's their first yeah, time? Yeah, I mean, what I suggest, Alex, is maybe we should record a pure video that explains all the strategies. So I can come. I think the goal of today was to give you an overview, guys, of uh, uh, the different projects that are available in the DeFi space with the Binance Smart Chain. But if you guys are interested, I can list the different strategy that you can use from the very simple one to the more sophisticated one. I can do the math in real time for you and uh, we can explore these things, but we need a proper episode to do that because it's long. Okay, guys, so don't forget to leave in the comment box below that if you want a deep dive for strategies in one of these specific Binance Smart Chain farming pools or sites, don't forget to put the name below if you want to hear more about Cream, if you want us to do a deep dive into pancake swaps, let us know. All right, so we're moving to the last platform. Is that correct, Anthony? That's the last platform. So the last platform is the Vault mechanism. So it's the most complex one to impact. Uh, and basically, pr principle is the same. So you, you are going to pledge your BUSD, for example, and you're going to receive a yield because they do some optimization for you. They use some platform. They, they, every technique that we just described before, you can do it yourself or you can trust the Vault to perform them. And, um, and that's the most simple way, in a sense, to get access to more complex strategy. What is good is, for example, we see that before we've been, uh, uh, with Cream, we've been lending our BUSD with a return of 2 spot 60%. If you go to this platform, you're going to receive 11%. But of course, risk is not the same. So again, you need to make your assessment. Liquidity is not the same, so you can move much faster. I think that's, that's a world where when you decide to go inside this world, you, then you, you, you need to play a lot that you understand the mechanism. And only when you understand the mechanism, then you can make a good investment decision. Because it's not only about the APY. It's how frequently can you be available to move your allocation because the more API, APY is attractive, maybe the, the, le the more volatile it is. And you see something now, and in one hour from now, it's good. it has, yeah, APY changed, and it has, it has dropped a lot. So again, it's a f in a way, it's a full-time job, right? And I think you can, you can watch any influencer and YouTuber since DeFi craze has started, they are extremely tired, right? They are exhausted because they spend so much time looking at new projects, understanding the risk, investing their money, and it takes them. It's, uh, it's, I think the farming terminology is a good terminology, right? right? Yeah, <laughs> waking up early up in the morning and going to put your seeds and, you know, like treating the soil and <laughs> creating your crops, right? It's, uh, it's a lot of work. Farming is, a, is good terminology. And for the, for the lazy one, again, you, you know, we, we, <laughs> Uh, coming back on what we do at SwissBorg is we offering a direct access to this strategy. So I think, again, you don't necessarily, it's always good to understand uh, how it works, how it works, what you invest in and understand the mechanism and, and, and go deep into understanding the mechanism. Then do you want to do it by yourself? That's another story. And I think that's, that's always what we where we try to keep the balance at SwissBorg, I think in the space right now, we have either do it yourself or do not do it yourself, but we give you no transparency, no knowledge, no accessibility. That's what you get. And we do, we do the rest. And I think at SwissBorg, we always try to say, you can do by yourself. And we are very happy to share everything that we know. But we create as well a system that are extremely transparent and make the hard work, the heavy lift for you. Yeah, so for the guys watching out there, as you can see, it's not super, super easy to do yield farming, but the Swiss Borg solution is the automated, optimized solution. Is, is it fair enough, Anthony, to say that, you know, if you were a farmer, that Swiss Borg is that kind of setup, all the equipment on your farm that just waters everything every day by itself, that 
turns on the lights to heat it at the right temperature. Is that correct? Is it for the farmers who want to be lazy and not have to take care of their crops every single day? Exactly. It is basically hiring a robot that can perform all the tasks and equipping your farming uh, uh, installation with all the automation tools that you can find. And you just monitor on your phone. <laughs> and instead, you can be that farmer who eats burgers and drinks beers on his porch instead of <laughs> going around the fields. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, just to finish off the, this whole point, so uh, is it is it um, clear enough to say that as of today, you prefer Binance Smart Chain for farming rather than doing it on Ethereum, Anthony? I would say I like a lot the Ethereum community. I like the innovation. I think that would take a lot of time for Binance to reach such a degree of innovation to really convince the smart people of Ethereum to maybe develop things on Binance Smart Chain. I do feel that Ethereum is still the playground, playground where you're going to see the most innovative and the, 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 the smartest mind of, of the DeFi ecosystem. So I would say Binance Smart Chain needs Ethereum anyway. But I do, I mean, performing the hard task of farming every day and trying to optimize as well return for my own pocket. And um, I feel like the Binance Smart Chain is something that you need to take uh, into consideration when you are serious about DeFi investment. And, um, and I would say I like both of them. Uh, my heart always goes to Ethereum because I love the community uh, of Ethereum, but I do like the pragmatism of Binance. And it's extremely hard to say if I like one better than the other, but Binance Smart Chain is definitely something that I like to play with every day because it's so cheap and so fast to experiment uh, that definitely there is this pleasure to, 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 uh, to experiment uh, farming on, on the Binance Smart Chain. That is not really the case with Ethereum, unfortunately. You guys heard it. What is your opinion based on all the points that we looked at from a very high level, from the specifications of using the platforms and the chains, the philosophy, the practicality? What is your favorite platform for farming? Is it Ethereum? Is it Binance? And what specific platform are you utilizing to make your gains? Please don't forget to put in the comments box below. Anthony, thank you so much for coming on the show. Last word before leaving. Thank you, Alex, very much. And thank you guys for listening. Do not hesitate to comment, to ask for things. We always want to hear, hear you from you guys that we can create extremely good content. I mean, we, there is so, much th so many things that we see at Swissbox. So please, guys, comment and ask for anything. It's Christmas very soon, so we'll be, we'll be here. You heard it, guys. Contest. Don't forget to make your requests. If you want us to dive deep, much deeper than what you see on the internet and actually have proper due diligence, a proper review, testing, tutorials, all in one video, put your request in the comments box below. Thank you so much for joining us every Wednesday, premiering at a PC near you, eight o'clock GMT. Have a great night and see you next week, guys.